meeting for May 26. Please come to order. Oh. The first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. extension uh, while we're meeting over the last year there's been several programs at the state level that have come up that we've had to deal with that we wouldn't normally like the mattress program there wasn't a mattress program now the state's getting involved so we have to implement that so it's taking us more time than we would want i just meant updates like the united nothing salvation. salvation army been and things like that Do they? Yeah. We can give you the updates on the things that have actually been yeah, yeah. that have been added because well, it's actually good.
I'm gonna I nominate Katie to make that conclusion. Okay. okay. I second that. <laughs> She's taking most of the notes on that. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, because there have been some changes in the center, including ours and things. So I thought that would be glad to do that. Thank you. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? And the other was to add a resolution um, to amend a past resolution on money that has already been borrowed for uh, more road improvements. And if we can add that as a topic, then I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? If we could take care of that now, I have bond counsel here to speak to it. Um, what happened a couple of years ago, 2012, we had a bonding project to do Riverview Road, um, who knows how to say this, Woman Chinook Brook Bridge. Um, Gaylord Road Bridge over Marcy, uh, or Marcy Brook Bridge, and some work on the dam and fleet refueling system. The work on the dam um, at the time we went to borrow the money, we didn't know that the state was going to be creating a program that we could enter. So after we borrowed the money, we found out that the state had a program available that would not only do the spillway work that we had wanted to address, but also the face of the dam. And so by entering that program, we can get more work done and spend less of our money. So. Mike's going to be giving you an update later, which will give you some of these exact numbers. But as I understand it, we were going to spend $695 on the uh, spillway. And now we'll be able to spend $400 and something. Um, and the state will pay to get the whole dam refaced to an incline they like nowadays modern, and more work on the spillway. So we'll spend 400 and something instead of 695 to get more work done. The other issue was the fleet refueling system. So as you know, the fleet refueling system that we have down on Patriots Way <coughs> needed to be uh, updated. We already did some work on putting sensors in there, and now we can get external pumps for about $50,000. Uh, but in the meantime of identifying that project, when we first rolled it out to bid, it came in at more than what we had uh, designated. Also since then, the Century Grass project was approved for two and a half million dollars, which we didn't know was going to happen back when we did that. And so with the thought of, re of moving the fueling station off of Patriots Way, because in the traffic study, we had the traffic realigned and stuff going through Patriots Way, so having the gas station there is kind of sketchy. And people want to redevelop the riverfront and everything. So not really knowing where we want to put that, we want to buy a system that we put where we want it to be. So with Century Grass coming down, um, we want to wait till that project comes down and we get an update on how that's going from Mike tonight also. So this is money that's already borrowed and we want to just reallocate where it's to be expended. So the request this evening with this resolution is for 950,000, which is those two projects together, to do uh, road work, and Michael has some of the names of the roads, but one of them is Road Street, so I'm kind of excited about that, um, to reauthorize where the money is to be expended, and I have the bond council here to answer any questions. So we're all on the up and up and leave
said you know, it's close to fifty thousand dollars. So it's it's not as if the need is gone. The need does not go away for the fleet refueling. Right. But what we'll end up doing is paying the premium price on these vans. No, I, okay. All right. So, um, and that, but that's that's the only item that necessarily is going to be coming at us at some time in the future. You said that in the short had, term, because right. in the other project ongoing for the state, we're going to be partnering. So I have to ask you a question. So for the for the resolution, would you mind introducing yourself to the council? Because I think maybe everyone doesn't know you. Uh, Joe Fassi, the farm council for the town. For years and years. I know you're probably missing Ray O'Brien. So I have the resolution here, which you'll see on your handout is appropriated, it's just a regurgitation of the same appropriation that was from 2012. Did you guys hand out the resolution? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, the one with the line through it is the one you took action on in 2012. The new one includes a chart, which you'll see adds the road improvements. And on page two, the language that Proposed infrastructure prepared by the Town and Hill for Public Works Department and the current five-year capital plan. So that will help you identify the roads that would be included. And then Mike again will give you an update this evening on, on that. So this resolution, because we're changing where the money was originally advertised to be spent, will require a town meeting. So we'll have to schedule a town meeting, so probably before the next council meeting. Um, so we need a motion adopting the resolution, Joe? Uh, that's correct. And then if you decide to schedule the town meeting tonight, you need to waive uh, suspend the rules to do that and then do that. Right. Joe, I saw your hand. Yeah, I, I don't know when to speak up on this question. Thanks, but I have a question for Tom. Would you mind coming up to the podium, Joe? Thank you. People, organizations go out and buy these these bands, these bonds, anticipating they're going to be certain type of work done, or is it generalized when it's advertised for sale? Such that you know, it, if people are willing to purchase bands or bonds by the time they know for it, and then we turn around and use it for something other than its original purpose, does that raise a question by those people going out and purchasing those? Not if you do it legally. Well, really what they're buying is simply a cash flow. They could care less whether you build a school or a road. Is, um, thank you. Is there, um, May I just wait in case there's okay. another question. Is there, there an urgency here that this can't be put over for two more weeks? Well, the urgency, as I was talking to Mike, was now that we've had so much damage to the roads from this harsh winter, was to immediately get out there before the new budget. The new budget is on July. And so this would make the money available in just two weeks, and they can start planning on it right away. My, my concern is it's a significant amount of money that we're, we're looking for. Doing it with a bit of urgency here, and it's it's just about being open and putting our community on notice of these kind of significant matters. These these are large allocation of funds, um, and, and if we we notice it properly, it gives people if they want the opportunity to speak on the issue. Uh, I everybody knows I travel road street every day. And it is horrific on that one section of uh, bless you, uh, of roadway. Uh, and the fact that we haven't done anything to, uh, the fact that no one's complained that they've, they've blown out a bolt joint on the car yet, because I've hit some of those nasty ones a 
that we haven't done something temporary, literally just filling those right now until we can get you filled the potholes on my block. <coughs> Thousands of cars travel like Grove Street every day. Thousands. And so I know the urgency there, but we owe it to the community to, to let them know what's going on when we're moving huge amounts of money. I mean, we're going to move. And I agree with you. Grand, I and that's why the town meeting is the advertisement that will be in the paper, and then the public can speak to it. Um, so that's the only part. It's not an approval on moving the money. It's an approval on the resolution which we're required to have. And then we advertise the town meeting, which is in the newspaper, uh, which is probably a little better advertising than our normal agenda. And the video will be up. And then people can speak to it that night. If they hate it, then they can vote no. Town meetings are almost a rubber stamp. I know it's, I, it's just, you know, if we get, if we uh, receive backlash from the community, it's on just not letting them know when we're going to big things. It's, a, it's, it's, a million, it's just a million dollars. That's a big problem. I just Thank you. like them to know about it. Um, and so it makes me a little bit uncomfortable doing this quick. Right. Yeah, I just asked Joe, what would be your ideal solution? Just, just more than two weeks. Two weeks to what? Puts it on the agenda. So the, the, the agendas are published on the four or five days before the week. And you think, Pat, that the, 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 the advertising town meeting will get more publicity than the average town council agenda? I do, and it'll be on the next agenda also as action or as an update or as a follow-up. You could have it advertised as a follow-up. But the town meeting gets a little bit more advertising because it's in the newspaper. It'll be posted in the minutes this evening, so it'll be two weeks from now. You know, it's up to the council's comfort, but we saw it. Joe was available. I just want to make sure I'm correct in my understanding. This, in, because it is resolution, this would all, this whole resolution thing is going to be published. Right. Yeah. Which we don't get. You know, our agenda is, or theory we had, but it's not in the paper in the special notices area, which I, I think it's fair to say that, that we would get more view than that in our agenda. Uh, Tom? Thank you, Mayor. You know, I, I do think in this particular case, this town um, will give the exposure that it needs. My question is to expedite. I know from what I've read and see social media wise, Grove Street is a pressing concern like right now. So if this gets approved two weeks from now, how quickly can we resolve the Grove Street issue? Because you know we're, we're heading right dead in the middle of summer traffic coming up. Started this weekend, and then when school is out for about three weeks, you know, these hills are going to fill up with everybody from, you know, from here to Litchfield. And that road could use that work. Are we going to be able to get some of that work done or at least put a band aid on it prior to that? Uh, some sort of time frame on what we can do, maybe we'll attack the industry. I know Mike's going to be updated about it, but uh, we'd love to know that answer. Thank you. was already borrowed and in the authorizing resolution had already included um, road uh, road yeah 
this was already a road bond also in here. Um, but I can understand uh, Joe. And what I could do also, we could put on an estimate of when we think we're going to get to the other projects. That could be helpful. The Because we didn't know that we were going to be involved in the other projects that they're connected to when we originally met. Mary Jane? When is the, um, the rotary project supposed to start? Discussion possible action on the creation of a library modernization committee consisting of nine members effective May 26, 2015 for a term of six months. And Joe, to your point, the reason we don't have any names next to it is to make sure everybody can hear that one was created in case they want to call and um, volunteer, be considered, or make suggestions. Pete? Uh, is there going to be the funds were already uh, appropriated in this year's budget, um, and then the library had met and come up with different ideas and what they want to do, plus they hired a new director, and now we're ready to move forward with the study. I'll make a motion for the creation of the library modernization committee consisting of nine members in May 26, 2015, for a term of six months. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Thank you Walter. You're welcome. You're their favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all favorite. Oh, yes. yes. Good one. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is an update by Parks and Rec.
But Sunday and Monday were much better. I'm so glad that the temperature has gone up to where it should be. We have 13 lifeguards, trained lifeguards, American Red Cross certified, all ready to go. They've been on the beach already. Boat slips, all 83 of our boat slips have been sold. Uh, summer camp, we've hired 99% of our summer help. All of them have thus far been trained in CPR and first aid. We have approximately 50 counselors and supervisors. Summer camp begins on June 22nd. Right now we have, at the close of business today, we have 232 kids signed up for our summer camp, which is one of the best deals going in town. Mm -hmm. It works out to be about $1.86 per hour for the length of summer camp. We're going to be offering some new programs in the fall, uh, including learning how to be a cheerleader, fly fishing and fly tying, a program that the mayor had given us a grant for to begin called All Tuckered Out at Sarah Noble, where the kids just go and play and play dodgeball and just have a ball and just have fun. We're also doing Irish dance, introduction to Facebook, and trips to uh, New York Yankees on June 21st, which happens to be Father's Day, and Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. If anyone's interested in either of those, you're, they're available to sign up now. And one of the programs that I did want to mention that's an older program, older, we've been running it for about five years, is called Girls in the Group and Boys on the Move. We started out with about 10 kids at Sarah Noble. Uh, it's a running program that promotes healthy lifestyles and healthy eating and healthy choices. And right now we have 75 kids in the two programs. And we're very proud of them to go from such a small number up to such a large number. And we could keep going if we had room in the school. And it's just so, so popular. So that's what's coming up. That's what we're doing. Any questions? Thank you. Katie. Uh, nice to hear some of the kids are getting involved. Um, on the boat slips, uh -huh. all eight years were sold. Do you have any idea what percentage, give or take, of uh, uh, Milford, are they all Milford residents? All Milford residents, they have to be. What's the higher fee charge? I thought there was a uh, category that you could rent if you were not full time. We did that two years ago because we had not sold all of the slips. Oh, that's so you and did. it was just okay. a one-shot deal. Okay. Just to sell the remaining slips two years ago. Okay. And my second question is, um, where are we with the uh, an update on what's happening with the changes that we approved a year, year and a half ago? At things at Lindemic. At Lindemic. Things are moving along. I know right now they're working on the bid specs. Um, we all wish that things moved and what faster than that. Uh, I think they're just waiting to, to make up the bid specifications for a meeting to the town making them up. It would be it would be a matter of uh, the department and I believe Mr. Szymanski is going to be working with us on the So where are we that it's been quite a while since we started this? We are where Ellen side or the vendor side? I think Parks and Rec has been prepared. Okay, so we're waiting for the vendor to do this portion. That's the report I got from Dan. Yeah. Okay. And it, what, what is our uh, window of how long we wait for that? As the commission, um, I know Mr. Beecher has been has been uh, making phone calls and whatnot to move things along as quickly as he could. There's a lot of, a lot of um, good intentions, promises, a lot of discussion was had, as I'm sure you know you were involved in, when then we talked about all of this, and I think we all expected to be a little further along in that project than we are now. And so I just was curious as to what was holding it up, because, you know, there's some things are acceptable and some things not quite so. So if it's a vendor and this feature, you have your permission to see with that. Mm -hmm. okay, can you get an update on that? Um, like, say, the next meeting? Sure. I know. I'll uh, call time and find out Thank where you. he is with that. And thanks, Eleanor. Here was great programs. Any other? Oh, yeah, we have Beth. Uh, 
Scotland. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but you guys are doing a great job. I was excited to see the swim team in the parade. Um, yes. This is a personal passion of my own. So I noticed there were a lot more swimmers on the summer team. On the summer team, yes. That's very we, well, right now we have 44. Uh, and that's program that was struggling a little bit. So it I was, was very yes, it was. To see. Mm -hmm. So very well done. I think the, the partnering with USA Swimming has made a big difference because with being a partnership with USA Swimming, for those of you who don't know, um, who have never had someone involved in the swimming program, the USA Swimming brings the swimmers up to a different level, offers them a different level should they decide to compete more competitively with their swimming. And it keeps them here in town as opposed to traveling to Brookfield. My daughter swam for years for Mako's in, in uh, the Y down in Brookfield. And not only was it uh, a challenge to get her to practice all the time, it was also a challenge to come up with a lot of the fees that the, uh, the Y charges. So we're very lucky to have that partnership with USA Swimming, and it has boosted our numbers. Yeah, so very well. Yes. The other thing is, um, I know a couple of years ago you had problems at Young's Field with the softball field, the drainage. How's that going now? It seems to be going very, very well. Well, we haven't had a huge <laughs> amount of rain, you know? Yeah, so. Well, that's exactly about the Helen Marks Field as well. The Helen Marks Field is magnificent now. Right. I mean, it really is. And, and our guys have gone out and cut out the, the uh, uh, baselines and whatnot. It really does. It's and been nice. It's wonderful. It's it great. does. And people are actually excited about using the Helen Marks Field. So. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank you and your staff for all you guys do. Especially in Alcantara, my daughter is in the girls' the group, and uh, she ran her first 5K last year. And she's in uh, right now. She's in it right now too. And she should come tomorrow. It's amazing, you know, <laughs> amazing change that she's been able to do that. So I just personally wanted to say thank you. It's a great program, and I'll pass it along to our instructors because it's all a credit to them in the job they do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Eleanor? Thanks, Eleanor. that have gone on throughout the uh, current fiscal year and our proposals for 2015-16. Hopefully we'll hit on some of the topics that came up just a few agenda items ago, and then we can uh, go into a little bit of detail about some of those specifics as well, right? So this current fiscal year that we're in, we had some operating capital given to us in the amount of about $685,000 um, that allowed us to perform reconstruction of the house terrace, Meadowland Drive, and Gaylordsville, and a resurfacing
We also did many other smaller activities and tasks out there, um, safety repairs and, and other items as our budget allowed. Um, so going forward to 2015-16 um, in our operating capital, and that's what got brought up a little while ago, um, Still River Drive, we're looking to resurface that. So those of you that drive that on a regular basis, you know, know about when that was built and kind of generally the condition of that. Grove Street, the section from Bill Street down to Anderson Avenue. So we have this very nice intersection. 67 and 202. Um, we had the Aero Project resurface the southern portion of the road, which represents probably the vast majority of the length that people travel. Um, and then unfortunately, we have this four section. Um, so you can kind of see the difference of really the same travel in public, but that's why you know, we're specifically requesting funds that this isn't something that we can do under our normal highway construction budget. Um, additionally, um, as I indicated earlier, we have about 86 miles of local road four roads on this list of carriage drive and archers lane um, which are sort of in the neighborhood adjacent to each other and then the same thing with Warwick drive and daily road again roads that are adjacent to each other that makes sense that you know share drainage systems you know generally share an intersection you know things like that to give us a little bit more bang for our buck on the repairs um, additionally in that um, you know fall we were able to crack seal the town hall parking lot but there's more work to be done that was generally basically to continue crack ceiling, um, putting the three surfacing on and reading the markings out there so people can park in a efficient, orderly manner. Um, and then there's other bridge repairs and maintenance that sort of add beyond the normal small repairs and maintenance that we have, but we want to specifically call them out again. That's the Still River Drive Bridge. These are things identified by the DOT during their semi-annual inspection on our over 20-foot bridges and then board the road. Physically by a bump um, as you're going across the expansion joint at the west end, but that those are items that need to be addressed um, because they do service a fair amount of traffic out there. Um, so also, what we have planned um, is in 2015-16, so starting July 1st, and we're in the process of either acquiring quotes or um, you know just planning exactly what roads we have. But we plan to crack seal about eight to 12 miles of road, depending on the road conditions we see out there. Obviously. Material you know, could be consumed um, if we don't choose the correct road. So that's why generally we try to keep the very good roads good um, in that category. And then again, um, from a pavement preservation standpoint, chip ceiling again, 12 to 15 miles. Um, you know, that can be a variety of conditions of road, but basically we want to preserve the good sections. in that program. And then as I said, milling and filling. Um, what we're looking at is roads that are you know, in slightly worse condition, have some longer stretches of distress on the road, you know, generally make an unpleasant experience traveling down the road. Um, but again, from a cost effectiveness and a project standpoint, we try to you know, handle sections of town that we see. Um, you know, people are generally using um, a fair amount, so there's a lot of traffic on Aspetuck Ridge Road. We have road races that go down that projects, other things. West Meeting House Road 1, which again gives some general connections of some neighborhoods. And then Maryall Road 1 and 2, which um, if you remember a few years ago, um, in the upper section of Maryall is not 1.8 miles, and these roads are just due for a little bit enhanced maintenance is really what we're looking at. So coming this year also, Aspetuck Ridge Road Bridge, the southern end by the brass mill, that will keep one lane open for traffic, alternating traffic, and then Wellsville Avenue Bridge will be a, a full closure um, to reconstruct the deck of that abundance of our fair shape. Um, so they'll be in pain and so on. And then um, we kind of talked, touched on it a little bit earlier about Grove Street, but one thing we do do, I mean, it's obviously safety repairs is, is the type of term. So you know, no one wants a pothole out there and it sort of can ruin your day if that's the case, um, but generally the safety repairs, we need to keep the roads in, in passable condition um, while cost effectively doing that. So that's pothole filling, that's some thin overlays and spots, that's milling and filling some areas that's a short-term fix that may only last a year, that may last up to four years, but generally um, you know, expanding for the next fix or capital request or other funding mechanisms in future years that there's projects. Example, I think 
grocery, you know, cognizant of the fact that we have a program overly planned on that road, and so we're you know, trying to do what's required safety-wise on the road to keep it passable um, without injury, but yet we don't want to spend a whole lot of money on repairs that effectively we're going to, you know, we're going to mill up in the you know, near future um, before it becomes a, you know, a, a rather try to be a little bit more frugal about how we're spending our money. Um, we're trying to keep the safety repairs in that um, to the essential ones and not, you know, you know the viability is not the best right now, but with the, the future project plan here, we, uh, we feel that's a good way to spend money. So, Mike, we have some questions that want to be sure. asked right now. Obviously, it's good. I'm going to mention Grove Street. Um, I don't know what, do we know what the number of vehicles per day that go through here Monday through Friday? The last track that I remember is about, in that section, about 11,000 cars a day. Yes. And I think most of them are in, in, the, in the commuting hours. Um, it, to pick up on your comments, Mike, it's safety and passability. Um, I just know because I drive it every day. Uh, in, in the commuters, they don't use Bridge Street because it's, it takes a very long time to cross it in the morning traffic. So everybody goes the back way. Um, it, it is, I'm finding it hard to believe it's right now safe and passable. And I, I know we don't want to throw away money, but can we do something temporary? We're not going to get Grove Street, even if this all works out with the reallocation of these, this bond money. It's going to take time to get it out today and get it done. That may, and realistically, or would we see any kind of work on that section of Grove Street between, before the end of summer? Well, we certainly like to get to it. I know about you know, the end of the city, end of summer. Um, there's still some planning stuff to be done once the money you know, is available to us. Um, we have to get some survey support done and some, some uh, engineer drainage plans. Uh, correct, and although we expect to take a real long time, we've already done some of the work. Um, to the extent we can be off this, but um, you know, without some final information, we obviously can't complete that. So it's um, a little bit bigger, so it's a bigger project yeah, if that was to be redone correctly. Correct, but you're looking at you know a $150,000 project estimate here that's going to become available, and we, we could easily, to, to make that road, um, I'll say, more aesthetically pleasing and more comfortable to ride on, um, we probably spend almost half that money. Um, it's a lot to repair on that thing. You literally take us the opportunity to overlay those sections of the road um, with, 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 the, with the machine. And we're probably talking about, you know, I haven't done the exact estimate, but I would mean, have to guess it would take several hundred tons of asphalt to do those repairs right now. And from a cost effective standpoint, it just don't make sense to me to do that when we have this project coming about because we're buying six months of time, effectively, or four months of time. And that needs to be a prudent expenditure of funds because we really don't have. That much funds left right now, and we're obviously dealing with many other roads in town that have similar conditions that we're trying to follow and patch um, currently to, you know, after the four winter. So, well, and, and the idea is to you know, expedite the funds getting to us so that we can start that process as soon as possible. That's what that is. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking about major project, but for lack of a better word, pothole repair. Some of those holes have gotten tremendous in size. I know we, 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 we did a little bit of it in the later part of the winter, but something, and I don't know if we can determine this pothole is bigger and more dangerous because it's closer to the center line than this one over here uh, on the edge of, of, of the white line. So, you know, you're less likely to run into that if it's a narrow spot, but you're more likely to hit the one on the center line. If we, I think, if we can wait it, uh, to get it fully planned out, fully done the right way, which is the wise thing, but we're probably talking at, at best case scenario with the way I'm hearing is the fall. I think the people of this community at, at Wright Road Street are going to be out of their minds by the fall. It, this can, that section can only get worse right now. Every car, every truck that hits one of those hot potholes has got to be to side of I'll try to answer that. We haven't really discussed this mile yet. However, once the money is available to us, there's certain things I can do, I think, to help make it safer. Uh, one of the things I can do is actually mill the road, although I may not hit it for another couple months. After that point in time, I can mill it and get it certainly more comfortable to ride. Well, it's uh, like 
we know, yeah, but, it's you know, we can we can do a little bit of that kind of repair. Because that's money we're going to, that's not, I hate to say wasted money. It's not money that's duplicated in another service. The mill the road is something that we're going to do anyways. So whether I mill it when, on day one, I mean, I can't necessarily do it right now, but you know, shortly thereafter we get the money, I think I can go ahead and do something like that. And then, you know, we can get our final design done, get some drainage work done that we plan on doing that day before we move the final over. But at least that will make it Maybe maybe uh, that's the, maybe that's that's a, a small alternative. Somebody, if someone hasn't blown out a tire yet or bent the rim, I, I, I'd be shocked. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I hit one of those that one day and it just rattled my cage. I'm like, this is yeah. a personal we'll mess. Some we get those off. We go out there. Any time we report like that comes, or even our guys are traveling on the road that see a model like that, they report it right back to the office. We get a patch crew out there, you know, to fix it. You need to repair it. It doesn't make it. Um, more comfortable to ride, but it certainly doesn't jar you know, where you know, you're going to blow out a rim or something like that. Um, you know, it does happen, obviously, if models do, do perform like that, especially after rain storms. Um, you know, so that's usually when we're out controlling, and we'll try to get it fixed up as soon as we can. But uh, like I said, you know, they do happen all the time, too. So. Maybe, maybe the milling of it is, is a great idea for, for now, and that'll get us to the point where we can have something. Because, they, they, I, you know, I, I don't drive all roads in this time, but I drive that one, and it, it is horrific. The other question I have, while well, I still have your attention, I will go to your room for a minute. Um, you, you guys just chip uh, seal mill, uh, paper mill road, right? Correct. <clears throat> you uh, how, like in the last week or so? Um, I believe it was last Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes. It was Tuesday. Because I, I drove on in a weekend because obviously it's noticeable. Right. Um, and I know part of that process is, but I, it looked like a lot of the stone had gotten because it's just the volume of traffic it literally got pushed up with the piles on the side. Do you guys ever go back and just regret it or do you just allow time to, to on that road in particular, and if you look at the website I usually know I didn't update it today. I didn't list it that it was swept this morning and that was the, okay. the last road stuff. So because it almost you don't hold that way tonight, it, it's much better. It, it just it usually takes yeah. about five to seven days, five to ten business days maybe for it to swept. Yeah. So yeah, after letting the snow in for a little while, obviously, you know, any of the loose ones can get kicked to the sides um, first and then they're going back to sweep and we that's the okay. type of this is going to happen. So, um, Stan, Jay, that was, I think it was done, so I think yes, so it's coming back from that way today. Um, I assume that that's yeah, later on. Yeah, that. I didn't check it specifically, but. All right. Thank you. Uh, 
We haven't heard that specific plan yet, because that's obviously the fact as part of their bid proposal. Um, several of them had asked today if that train line's available to be used, and we had uh, offered them Coos County Railroad's contact information. That's something that they could use um, should Coos County Railroad and them come up to an agreement and or um, inspection feature, because obviously using those rail lines is going to have to be something that uh, yeah. Coos County Railroad's going to allow them to do as well. But uh, it's certainly an option that's available to them. Uh, barring that being the case, most of it would uh, obviously by truck. Otherwise. Katie? Um, so I'll go right to what was mentioned earlier. We were talking about Grove Street, and I have to tell you that I know of other town roads need help, but the largest amount of complaints, noise, and comments from people are about Grove Street. And I'm sure you know that, so I'm just going to say, Joe already said it all. I don't drive on it every day, but if you something to make that easier, uh, a lot of people will be happy. My question is about the rotary, uh, Kim of Rotary, as we're sitting here, what uh, mm -hmm. roundabout, Sorry, roundabout. Me. modern roundabout. Okay. <laughs> what is, you obviously wouldn't intend, I hope, to do that during the time you're, uh, um, you just didn't tell everybody to stay home. By, uh, <laughs> well, What's the plan? Yeah, she did I talked just a little bit about this. Uh, yeah, my timeline of these projects when they come through, um, you know, we're looking at a design right now that's, that's going to take us through the fall to early winter in terms of the, the roundabout with the approval process that we have to go through to get everything through the state, any rights away issues. Um, we don't see it going, I don't see it going out to bid before winter. So that will be said, resurfacing or whatever you, your term for it, yeah. uh, will be done and over with before that. Correct. And then I would match the Still River Drive money that's coming through with, with this proposal to when we do one, we would then do all the pavement at one time out of the Still River Drive okay. um, from basically the roundabout area, and I believe it's the west section, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe some of the some of the eastern side of that intersection, I don't remember exactly how far we are going, but the majority of it's to the west side of that. But in either case, all of the pavement would then be done um, at the same time. We would then have that contract to also do finish treatment on the rest of the road. Um, and lastly, do you have any sense of what percentage of this work that you have here on this? I know this is not all encompassing, but it's going to be subcontracted and how much you're going to do yourself? Of this work on here? Yeah. Um, all of that, other than the plan proactive maintenance, um, in which crack seal is done by us, um, everything else is pretty much done through safety repairs of course are done by, by my crews or our crews. Um, all the rest of the work is, is generally contract work. So the stuff that you guys do, is there any advantage in speeding things up, particularly in some of these roads that are really in bad, bad shape, by subbing it out? Um, when you only have so many guys and well, so many machines. We sold our paper this year as part of our right. process. So we don't have our big paper anymore. We're not really in the business of doing major roadways like this, like these projects are really required. Um, we, you know, we plan on doing some minor repairs, and Dan talked about some minimum to build. Those are, you know, 50 foot stretches of road, that's where it comes a little cheaper for really our guys to uh, do that kind of work. Um, we can use machines to do it, but it's it's just glorified handwork, if you want to say, in, in a lot of cases. But, um, you know, doing a, a full overlay project, we talked about it. basically, <coughs> Grove Street, I think it's, you know, somewhere around 1,600, 1,800 tons of asphalt that has to go down just in that stretch. Um, so so, so in essence, you're speed. not holding up so. any, any the timeliness of anything by keeping it in to our guys. You are going out to bid on all Correct. of those things, Correct. which hopefully will afford us a more expeditious finish. As a matter of fact, many of the bids have already gone out for the services needed for these projects. So they're already being either advertised or have been advertised. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mike and Dan, for coming tonight. Um, I'm kind of still uh, segueing from my two fellow councilmen on the Grove Street. Is there an opportunity to move that project up? Well, I don't know how to answer that. To tell you the truth, um, as soon as the money is available, we're gonna we're gonna hit it as hard as we can. And we know it's property. We certainly understand that um, the condition of that road right now. 
So it, it so comes you back yeah. as the appropriation of the fund. Correct. Right. Yes. Uh, question two. Um, Long Mountain Road. Is there anything in the works? I thought we were going to do something up there this summer. So there's several roads. Say that then, you know, have we seen the deterioration of roads? Because this winter, absolutely, we've seen a, you know, a burden on the road because the free stall cycles this winter were tremendous. And that's really the worst enemy of a road is a free stall cycle. And it's just as simple as that. It's water infiltrating the road surface, and when you get a lot of rainstorms and, and the melting of the, of the snow uh, gets into those cracks, which is why we talk about cracks in and do those preventive maintenance programs to try to get that water out of the, the bases. Once it freezes, it then hoggles the road. Then it thaws again, we get more water infiltrating it, and then it freezes again. And you keep getting this, you know, this expansion and contraction of roads, um, which is why this winter really took its toll on, on roads. And I've heard that you know, in the state of Connecticut, across the country, and in the 21 states that had um, the severe winters that we had, um, all experienced you know, these kinds of road problems. And it's not localized to local roads, it's in state roads. I'm sure you all have been on plenty of roads. Seen break up tremendously with the, with the kind of that we had. So, yes, to say the least, yes, it's taking us a long way. And when you answer your question, I yeah, I'm just trying to get a sense of when we plan or when you plan against it for next year's budget for the major winter that we had. Obviously, that would impact when we look just far as expenditure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
their catch face on top. So I don't know about the just the top. The drainage pipes, their, their pipes are usually concrete, so uh, they probably don't have to replace a lot of those unless they're disjointed. And then we've heard a lot about the main roads in town, but I know a lot of the uh, scenic roads got killed this winter as well. Um, I know we just recently went on the van and it was awful. So <laughs> do we have a timeline in place for some of those scenic roads? Is there anything different we can do to help them out? Um, we've been usually takes us, uh, well, we have 26 miles of gravel road, um, you know, so we put it out there, and you know, it usually takes us about, in, in the springtime when we're doing kind of a more um, permanent and uh, you know, fixing all of those potholes and all of the other you know, drainage issues and things like that on the road. And it takes us about eight weeks to get one round fully through those road systems. So we really want to be doing it. Of course, we're down to one grade right now. Our second one, I'm going to say it's in transit, basically it's at vendor shop right now we shipped from the manufacturer to the vendor shop that did it and he had a couple of items to, to add to that and I believe we're supposed to get it next week. Uh, so that's going to be a huge help to get a second grade right now but we can do you know unfortunately grading the road with one grade right now because I don't want to do a lot of snow there last year and it's going to happen since that time. So. And I know uh, there's just been tons of comments all over about potholes and I understand the issue of it but it seems like there are a number of people
one of the nicest areas of, of the Milford River area, and it's all overgrown with the, with, the, with the big bubble trees that kind of like out of sight, and then the, over, the underbrush. It's just really taking away that scenic value. And that's a nice calm area uh, of the river. You get a nice view up, up the river. So I think that that's a great investment. In that. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Frank Walter. I'm good. Katie? I just a question. You mentioned that you go out in the fall to early winter to assess the roads. Now, that, to me, that's a little counterintuitive. Well, how come you don't go in the spring and see what they need? Or are you saying you've already done, you've used your money to fix everything during the summer, so you're going out in the fall to see what didn't get fixed? There's uh, a couple different yeah. reasons to do it in the fall. I mean, mostly, I want to say it's for budget preparation to finish some of our accounting for what got done and what needs to be planned for the spring. And then additionally, um, well, there may be unexpected failures. I mean, roads generally create a, project, a predictable you know, pattern. And that's why Grove Street's on this request. That's why Still River's on this request. Because you saw in the fall plan, how well, bad it was. Correct. And so no. Um, you know, Would you say that the budget prep is your prime driver? updated after the construction season is done because we're getting the most current at least information of course on those roads. Okay, so we do those roads and we also do the rest of our planned set of roads that you know, that we get. So. And since you couldn't see some of them because we had so much snow from when it did, so what did you do? Just expedite and move to in the spring or did you just want to we able to accomplish the hundred and four roads that we did around the, did. the winter oh. weather that we have in June. Well, in, in our prime planning season, besides the budget, we generally, you guys have been supportive of our budget and giving us consistent funding, which is important for us from a planning standpoint and being able to communicate to the customer when their road is on the list or um, making sure. So, yes. Yeah. Any other questions for Mike at this time?
that's what happened to one of our fields last year for the tremendous rainstorm. Last year we attended the new American uh, Farmers Market. Uh, it was brand new to the town. People were really excited about it because they wanted a place where they could get some fresh produce, but there was none. Um, and we got a girl, her name was Jenna, right? Jenna Iowa. And she was a nice one. Uh, she had just graduated last year. She was a Girl Scout. That was her goal project to start with. So we sort of, we were one of the three vendors, um, the only vegetable producer, and we carry our model with us that.
specifically mentioned hiring SAE students from not alone. What about the building? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was there. talk about replacing the barn. I like the old barn because it gives it that nostalgic look of the Milford. And I think it's it's money well spent. And I'm, I'm glad to see it's being used and, and worked. I wish it could be worked even more. Uh, but it's 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 a, an asset to the town. And I'm glad we did. Thank you, Frank. Any other questions? Welcome. Well, I got to say is I should be that young and that energetic. We got <laughs> Two gems standing right before us. Just outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. But I'm not that young or anything. Right, and I'll go to retire teacher, you know, so don't let him, but, but you can invite him up to help you do a presentation. Yeah, sure. For sure. Katie? Well, uh, I'm Katie Dunn. I'm the Assistant
first turned over two years ago and cover planted, I hope that you're going to plant something up there, uh, whether it's Mark and the new agency for potatoes or you're going to plant potatoes or something because that was the whole intention with going to the effort and, and time and whatever labor that went into that. So I hope that's done. But um, otherwise, I think you did a wonderful job with everything and um, you, made it, you just made it look Any other questions for these guys? Was there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nice. Nay? Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Nice presentation. Thanks. Okay, we've moved everything around here. Let's take a look at this calendar. Third Thursday. Discussion and possible action on request to close the Southern Cross over the green. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Item A is the clerk's office with the request for the $4,000 preservation of land records grant. So moved. Second. Further discussion? A. Uh, this grant is not a matching grant, it's a full, fully funded grant. Correct. Fully funded. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Item 10 is money that we're going to get back for money that we spent. This is a grant uh, when we did the conversion for the uniform chart of accounts and got it all ready to go into Munis. And so uh, this is a $30,000 grant that uh, it's so moved. So moved, second. Charles B. Barlow Revocable Trust for Restoration of the Lavorman Bridge. Second. What happened to B, Madam Mayor? Yes. Can I jump it back? We're in a good day. No, we didn't do B. No, we didn't do B. No, we didn't do B. We didn't do B. We didn't do B. We didn't do B. Sorry, Madam Mayor. It's very early in the middle of the day. All right. We're just going to stay. We'll go back to the next day. We got a donation from Robert T. Du Bois in memory of Sue Du Bois for the restoration of the old Lavorman Bridge. So we'll go back. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Discussion of possible action on Town of New Milford's participation with 2015. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Tax, Tax assessor? So moved. Second. All in favor? Oh, hang on. Please kind of take the refunds are 73 of 555. We need the balance of 69 of 7. Let the record reflect the balance as posted here on the paperwork from the tax assessment. Good tax. That the balance after May, here's your page. The balance after May is, you got that, right? Okay, $6,907.11. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 